Okay, so once you've signed up for a Cloud9 account, not an AWS Cloud9, but the old Cloud9 account through the education account, head over to c9.io forward slash login, or if you've just clicked on the link in the email and you've logged in, that's fine too. And let's see, let me type in my thing. Okay, so this is the screen you'll see when you log in, and these are workspaces. Anytime you create a new project, you'll create a new workspace. One workspace, holds one project. So go ahead and click the create a new workspace button here. And you can name it anything you want. I'm gonna name it to do and keep the defaults. And we want this Ruby on Rails right here. So click that, don't click this Rails tutorial and then click create workspace. And what's happening now is it's actually spinning up a Linux web server in the cloud. And it has Ruby on Rails already installed. It has a whole bunch of other things installed that we're gonna need like Git and things like that. And it has its own command line terminal like on any Linux or Mac machine. So that's really, really cool because you need to run commands commands when you use Ruby on Rails. So the first time you do this, it's creating a, con a container. It can take a little while, sometimes a minute or so. In the future, when you log back in, you won't have to wait like this. It's already up and running. It just stays running all the time. And so that's pretty cool. So here's what you see. Now, your screen will probably look different. Yours is probably white or light colored. I just went up to this gear and let's see, I clicked on themes and I just, I picked this dark theme. I just like it better. It's just a matter of personal preference. If you like the light colored one, go ahead and use that. Uh, personally, I just like the dark. So this is what we're gonna be working with the rest of the course, this screen here. And these are the files on the left. These are all of our Ruby on Rails files, all the directories, all the stuff that we're gonna need already installed, ready to go. Here is the command line. We can run regular Linux terminal commands, you know, so that's cool. Here in the middle is our text editor. So if we click one of these files and open it, it shows up here. This is where we're going to be writing all of our code and stuff. It's really cool. And if you're new to Rails, this can seem overwhelming. I totally understand that. There's so many different directories and, and what are all these things, you know? Don't worry. It's actually not too bad. We only use a few of these, really. And most of this stuff you can ignore. This log you don't ever use. The lib you won't use. Public test. We're not going to do any testing in this course. Temp vendor. None of these are going to use. Bin. We'll never use that. We will spend some time in app, views, models, controllers, and assets. We'll spend a little bit of time in config, mostly just with this routes file. Uh, we'll look at the DB folder a couple of times. We won't really use it for anything. And that's about it. We'll also use this gem file. So just a few files and folders is all we really need to get started. So if you're overwhelmed, if you don't know what you're looking at, don't worry. It's all going to make a whole lot of sense very, very quickly. And as we use this throughout the course, you're going to get used to this stuff. You're going to start to remember where different things are. You know, now, most of the time we're going to be working in this app directory and either in the controller or the views really every once in a while we'll do something in the assets folder but that's about it so not too bad not as scary as it seems and pretty cool so also this command line terminal if you don't know anything about Linux commands if you've never used Linux or a terminal don't worry I'm gonna show you everything you need as we go forward we'll just use a few commands here and there it's really not that bad so that's cool so in the next video we'll set up version control version control lets us keep track of changes in our code sort of a common and programming thing. Uh, we'll look at that in the next video. In the meantime, Udemy or wherever you're watching this course, often by this third or fourth video, they ask you to review the course. There's a little thing that pops up that says, how many stars would you give that? Uh, if you give, if you go ahead and give me a four or a five star review, I would really appreciate that. If the course ends up being terrible, you can always go back and edit that and give me a one star or whatever. But uh, reviews make or break us here at Udemy. A few good reviews and people start to be able to find the course in the search results. A couple of bad reviews and the course just drops off the face of the planet. Nobody ever sees it. So I will absolutely bribe you silly later on. I can't do it just yet, but soon I will bribe you silly to give me a good review. And so I would just really, really appreciate it. I think it's going to be a good course. I think you'll enjoy it. But like I said, if you don't, you can edit your review anytime and I'll even show you how to do that later if you want to. <laughs> so anyway, enough of that. I won't harp on about it, but I would really appreciate it and it would help me out a whole lot. So in the next video, we'll jump in, we'll set up our version control and we'll move on from there.